Are you out of your mind? I told you to stay away from the guy. And didn't you tell me that you and Ryan want to set a trap for him? Well, I did it for you. Oh, no. What? What? You what? You are so anxious to prove that Ian is not what he seems. Well, here's your chance. This is not a game. This guy is dangerous. Well, we'll find that out tomorrow, won't we? What are you talking about, we? There's no way you're going anywhere close to the dock. Oh, I think you can dream about it. Besides, I'll be the one holding the towel. What? The towel that you and Ryan are going to use to wipe the egg off your faces. Look, I know I'm right about Ian, and I am going to prove it. Yes. Well, send it straight over then, all right? Thank you. Anywhere near here when Mr. Kent arrives. Is everything in order? Well, the table is set, uh, the dishes washed, the floor is waxed, the last of the laundry is in the dryer. What and, about dinner? Uh, Did you have time to prepare a salad or something? Yes, the salad's in the fridge, and the roasted potatoes are in the oven. And I made you a chocolate pudding for dessert. Oh, Doris, that sounds very holy. You're an absolute marvel, you know. I don't know how you do it. Tell me, Doris, how do you do it? The truth, it takes years to get this good. <laughs> yes, well, Doris. I don't have years. <laughs> oh, Captain Frankie. Hi, Miss Hello. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, why are you here? Uh, we're looking for Hank. Is he around? No, he's still at KBAY. What's going on? Is this a Cory outpost? Oh, no, not exactly. Nice apron. New twist on the power suit. Oh, this is it's nothing. Oh, no, it's something knowing you. Come on, Iris. What's with the June Cleaver bit? She's positive that Ian's not the guy we're looking for, and this is going to prove it. All right, are you sure Ian's going to show Ian up? Ian will be at the docks at 7 o'clock. He's got lust in his heart. Yeah. Everything okay on your end? Actually, no. What's the hitch? Well, I think it's going to be a tough time getting Vicky down to the docks. She should be dying to see if this is the guy she saw in the case. Well, she will be, Jake, if only I could find her. She's not home? No, she took off with Stephen and Grant this morning. No one knows where she is, not even Bridget. She's not in D.C. No, I checked that. But he hasn't even gotten in touch with Stephanie, and that is really not normal. Ryan, you know this is a waste of time without Vicky. I mean, what are we going to do? Just let Ian slip right through our I don't fingers? give a damn about Ian. What? Right now, the only person that I'm concerned about is Vicky. It's Kevin. I was hoping you'd be back by now. I miss you. I've had bad days and worse nights while you were gone, and I still don't know the right thing to say. We're just too good together to call it quits, Lorna. Maybe we can try for some kind of happy medium, a white picket fence around the penthouse terrace. <laughs> Let go of your hair, I was joking. It can get better, I know it. So can I see you tonight and, and prove it? I have a racquetball game with Victor at five, but after that I'm free, so let me take you to dinner. Uh, eight o'clock at tops. I love you.
I suppose. Hmm. Very funny. I'm surprising Hank. Yeah, now, what, what's going on with you two? I see clothes, I see luggage. I, have you moved in with him, you devil? Yeah, it just happened, actually. You and Hank are living in sin? Well, don't sound so shocked. You two kept house together. <laughs> kept house? That's something my mother would say. Oh, really? Well, live together, oh, if you this prefer that. sounds serious. What is it with you two? Either morality police or something? I think we'd better stop teasing her, don't you? Hank is terrific, Iris. I hope it works out for you. Well, thank you. I didn't realize that you and Hank were so close. Well, we got to know him a little through Tommy. We were here for Christmas. Hey, kiddo must be thrilled. He's crazy about you. Yes. Yes, he is, isn't he? <laughs> well, now that we've got my living arrangements all organized, maybe you could tell me why you're here. Corey business. Cass, you didn't know I was here, and Hank hasn't been at Corey for... A well, Rachel said that he was very helpful during the trucker strike. He was wonderfully, sir. And we think that the agitators who prolonged the strike were part of a larger plan to drive down the cost of Corey stock, and that they weren't members of the union. Take a look at this. Where did this come from? That's what we're trying to find out. One of the truck drivers gave it to us, but when we asked around, no one on the strike committee seemed to know where they came from. So we were hoping Hank could tell us where it was printed, and uh, we could work from there. I'll make sure. I I'll, I'll give it to him. Excuse me. Has this thing been going all day? Yes, more uh, or less. Oh, that would explain why we couldn't get through. Oh, this place is a disaster, electronically. You know, Hank only has one phone line, so I've had to wire all this stuff up to that outlet behind the couch, and there are certainly going to have to be some changes around here. I would clear that with Hank if I were you, Iris. Yeah, not a bad idea. Have you spoken to uh, Rachel? Yes, briefly. Well, you know, she's exhausted. You know what she's like when she gets back from travel. Any new progress? Yes, as a matter of fact, the stockholders have been very supportive. They're very encouraged by the sale of Amanda's book. Oh, well, let's hope things are turning around. You know me. Hate to be the voice of doom, but I think it's going to take a long time. There's been a lot of stocks being brought up, and... Uh, Look, this is what happened today. Great. May I keep this? Of course. I've got to get back to the office. I'm expecting a few phone calls. Well, thank you very much for your concern, Cass. I appreciate it. And I'm sure Hank will give you all the help he can. Well, good luck, Iris. With what? <laughs> Everything. We'll stop by later. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. As you can see, it's useless to phone. <laughs> Because, you know, I need some new phone extensions, and there are closets. Yeah, more closets. Maybe we should discuss that extension to the house. We need to talk about a lot more than that. Look, Ryan, you don't think that Grant's done something to Vicky, do you? I mean, I know he's possessive, but... No, no, he wouldn't do anything physically. Mentally. So nothing against you, but, uh... I've sort of hated your brother's guts ever since you showed up in town. I mean, he's a control freak. I think I know what he's doing. He's isolating her. He's what? He's done it before. What do you mean? It's an old Harrison family tradition. When the press gets too hard, you leave town. You take a vacation. You declare a family holiday. Maybe that's what you think he's doing. I'd bet my life on it. Who's he trying to avoid? Me. Things got a little tense between Grant and I. Especially after he kicked me out of Vicky's hypnosis session. That's where she was describing who she saw in the cage. Exactly, but I wasn't here for that. The only reason why I know about it is because I got it on tape. But he wouldn't tell you? Look, Grant doesn't even give a damn. He doesn't even want Vicky thinking about what happened up in Canada. Oh, great. So now he's going to tell her what to do. Well, that's how my father operated. Listen, Ryan, we have to make sure that Vicky unmasks Ian. I mean, I have to show Paulina that I'm right about the guy. Otherwise, she's in as much danger as Vicky is. What made you suspicious about this guy to begin with? Well, Ian shows up at the Corey's legal papers disappear. I mean, locks are smashed, the strikers start going haywire, and conveniently, this guy always looks like a hero. The Corey's didn't figure any of this out? You should see how cozy he is with the women. It's <laughs> sickening. Yeah. Well, we may not have the time even to get Vicky in position. Maybe they're home by now. 